sooner this turd is flushed down the toilet, the better. Bye bye, Boris. <sighs> These are the interesting times. Hello everyone, my name's Matt Johnson and welcome to The Interesting Times, which is a show that likes to take a sideways swipe at politics right here in the UK. Now, when I was just nine years old, I had for the first time in my life a Knickerbocker Glory, which for those that aren't aware, is an ice cream sundae. So, ice cream, raspberry ripple sauce, that lovely chocolate sauce that would harden as soon as you poured it out the bottle, bananas, and lots and lots of whipped cream. And it was the sweetest thing I've ever known. That is, until yesterday. Boris Johnson, uh, former Prime Minister, is going to stand down as an MP. It was an angry, fist-swinging exit. With a scathing attack on those investigating him over Partygate, Boris Johnson tonight sensationally quit as an MP. Right, deep breath. Firstly, are you OK? Yeah. I imagine that you might have been feeling a lot like I have. Shaken, troubled, let down, and full of questions. For someone who was not telling the truth, who acted in a way that they themselves felt that they had to resign. That is a lot to process. Yeah, but it's certainly bewildering. I just hope the British public are going to be OK. But I do want to bring you some news that's just broken on Friday evening, which is that Boris Johnson has resigned as an MP with immediate effect. Um... God knows they've been through enough. <laughs> but I know, even though they're hurting, They'll learn to love again. We only have... Thank you. That was Radio 4's Any Questions, recorded last Friday and given the news to a local Pembrokeshire audience, and it fell to the Secretary of State for Wales, Where's Wally Tribute Act, and Man That Can't Read the Room, to speak up for the unspeakable. I thank the audience for showing the usual impartiality that we expect with Radio 4. And say, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Boris got it right on Ukraine. Boris got it right on the vaccine programme. And Boris had it right. Boris had it right on Brexit. And I make no apologies for saying I really like the guy and I'm sorry he's gone. That was David T.C. Davis. I'm guessing the T stands for thick. Johnson has stepped down as an MP with all the grace of a teenager having their Wi-Fi stopped for a month. Posting a letter blaming Harriet Harman, the Privileges Committee, Rishi Sunak, Labour, the Liberal Democrats, the SNP, Harriet Harman, Sue Gray, Tory MPs, anyone that voted Remain in 2016, Daniel Stillitz, and of course, Harriet Harman. It's a shame that Johnson didn't actually hang around long enough to work out that the chair of the Privileges Committee, in this case, Harriet Harman, doesn't actually get a vote unless it's a tie. Also, the committee which found him guilty is made up of mostly Tory MPs, can only make a recommendation to the House of Commons, which is made up of mostly Tory MPs, who can then decide to implement it or not. If they decide to, and Johnson is suspended for more than 10 days, then if 10% of his constituents signed a recall petition, he would then lose his seat, and a by-election would be put in place for a later date, which Boris Johnson can stand in. However, he's decided to take the easy route. Again. And run away. Again. Oh, and he's also gone right ahead with his honours list. And Boris Johnson honours just sounds wrong. Like fun run, friendly fire, or make Brexit work. The honours list includes everyone who's upheld his conservative principles. For trashing the economy so he could personally amass a huge wealth. Arise Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg. I've always said he has something of the night about him. For being the acceptable face of racism, arise Dame Pretty Patel. For defending the indefensible... Whether but it's pretty obvious, not. isn't it, Mr Fabricant? Well, if, I'm, there I'm around 30, if there are around 30 people in a garden, bring your own booze, let's make the most of the nice weather, that is not a work situation, is it? Well, it's certainly not a good look, I agree with that. Sir Michael Fabricant. For letting the British public know what you think of them, Dame Andrea Jenkins. For breaking lockdown rules, Lord Sean Bailey. For breaking lockdown rules and being a mate of Carrie Johnson, OBE, Ben Mallet. For cronyism, Lord Ben Halshen. For partying, while everyone couldn't visit dying relatives in hospital, Lord Martin Party Marty Reynolds and Dane Shelley DJSWW Williams Walker. 
So Jacob Rees-Mogg and Michael Fabricant will both be knighted, meaning they will kneel in front of King Charles and have a sword placed on each shoulder. But it's worth mentioning that King Charles is 74 and the sword weighs four and a half pounds. Surely it would be far easier to get him to move it straight from one shoulder to the other, wouldn't it? Hmm? And finally, and most unbelievably on Boris Johnson's honours list, his hairdresser. He had a hairdresser? This guy. This guy. This guy had a hairdresser. But not everyone made the list. Nadine Doi Doris didn't. But she went on to talk TV to remind her constituents that come what may, she's not going anywhere. You know, the last thing I would want to do would be to cause a by-election in my constituency. Loyal to a constituency to the end which came about five hours later. But what happened between between 10 o'clock this morning, Nadine, when you said with great confidence to our colleague, Mike Graham, the last thing I want to do is trigger a by-election. And then by just about 10 to four this afternoon, you decided to do precisely that. So what happened during the course of today to change your mind? You know, I'm not someone who's gonna go, you know, blabbing out what that was immediately. Yes, whenever we think of Nadine Doris, the phrase dignified silence is the one that springs to mind. Nadine Doris has stepped down with immediate effect as an MP, which came as a complete surprise to her mid-Bedfordshire constituents, who are like, wait, are we still paying her? But if there's one thing we should remember about Nadine Doris, it's how incredible she is, according to, um, her? I trained as a nurse and worked in the NHS for 10 years. Mm. I started my own business, ran a very successful business from an original idea without borrowing a penny from anybody and sold it to a blue chip company. I became a director of a blue chip company. I'm a successful author who sold three million dollars. I know, I've really said this afternoon, it's extraordinary, I know you are. For me to be presenting a show on talk TV and writing a column in the Daily Mail, and I'm an author, you know, I published a book a year. I've um, served as an MP for 18 years. I served as a health minister throughout COVID in the Department of Health, mm. and I served as a Secretary of State. <laughs> One of the things I hope to do is remove myself from the position where people are asking me the questions that you're asking. Campaigned heavily for leave during the referendum, then criticised the withdrawal agreement negotiated for not giving the UK any MEPs. Oh, and was digital and cultural secretary and still can't work out how to put a f***ing phone on silent. But Nadine Doris, dear, simple, gullible Nadine, despite the overwhelming evidence that she was stitched up by her unrequited love, refused to finger him. Although she's clearly upset that he feels likewise. It's not Boris Johnson, obviously, going back on his desire to ennoble you. We know not that. Very loyal. My God, you're loyal. We've seen your extraordinary loyalty and steadfastness to Boris Johnson. No, I love him to bits. Always be loyal to. Ah, what price loyalty. And as for the big dog himself, well, another L word springs to mind. Is that when pollsters do that thing they sometimes do, they say to the uh, pe people who are filling in their polls, just give me one word that comes to your mind if I mention a particular politician. But in the case of Mr. Johnson, the word that comes out is liar. When it comes down to it, there is one thing Boris Johnson values above everything else. Boris Johnson. And this is calculated. He's resigned. So has Nadine and so has Nigel Adams. All with immediate effect, making it the first time that three Tory MPs have done anything with effect and there will be more Tory resignations. Nadine Sahawi tweeted that any speculation that he'll be stepping down is completely untrue, so obviously he's going. Plus, there'll be a few others, and Johnson knows that by doing this, irrespective of the committee's recommendation, the House of Commons won't back it, as there's still, so far, a working Tory majority there. And Sunak won't want the drama, or indeed, the possibility of more Tory lemmings leaping off a cliff. Johnson then will be safe to come back at a later date of his own choosing to try and get selected for another seat, or indeed, another party. You can catch it all on Netflix's new series, House of F***s. But just in case you're thinking that the House of Commons is full of self-serving narcissists and liars, another MP was stepping down, having served her constituency tirelessly and with conviction. This is how you resign your seat. I give you Caroline Lucas. So I'm here outside the Brighton Pavilion and feeling, you know, quite, quite emotional. And those of you who have seen my news that I have announced today that I won't be standing again at the next general election, I want to thank everybody who's helped me uh, to do the work that I've been so privileged to do. So that's my staff, uh, that's my family, that's, that's everyone who's been out there on doorsteps who've, who've helped me make a difference. But I just want to assure my constituents that I will still be here working night and day until that point. Class versus arse. And that's it. 
No chance to talk about Tory MP Miriam Cates, who is a Conservative MP for... All right, stop giggling. It's actually pronounced Penistone and Stocksbridge. And she has been on a bit of a crusade against, um, well... Our young people now have a lack of hope uh, and they have a lack of hope for the future. And I think we can see this in the rising levels of anxiety and depression amongst young people and sadly even suicide. And I'm saying that one of the things that has contributed to a lack of hope, I think, in young people is these kind of critical social justice theories that are being taught in schools and universities. Just to be clear, critical social justice theory isn't being taught in any schools. I did not say that cultural Marxism is causing low birth rates. I just didn't say. No, that's right. She didn't say that. That's just pandering to sensationalist headlines to suggest she did. What she actually said was that cultural Marxism is destroying our children's souls. See, context is everything. I urgently need some proper research into whether it is indeed safe at all for teens to have smartphones. Some have said that their smartphones are as addictive as cigarettes, that they are the opiate trade of the 21st century. One step at a time, let's start with smart politicians first. No time to talk about someone else who won't miss Boris Johnson. Michel Barnier, who had to deal with him during Brexit negotiations. The point is to respect the treaty and to respect its own signature. And I never understood, uh, I do not still understand, how the, the Prime Minister of a, such a country, a great country like the UK, can be able not to respect his own signature. Oh, come on, this is a man who isn't able to tuck in his shirt, that ties his tie such that he's likely to trip over it, psychotically unable to comb his hair, and is also unable to determine if this is breaking lockdown rules. Respect his signature? I'd be surprised if he recognised it. No time to talk about Rishi Sunak. Yeah, remember him? Well, he's been to the US to just get a trade deal and has come back with, all right, not a trade deal, but a declaration. And not just any declaration, but an Atlantic declaration, which is a formal or explicit statement or announcement. Here's an announcement, Rishi. You're an idiot. We send you out to the US at no small expense to open up dialogue on a trade agreement that at least goes some way to help stop the rot in this country. And you come back with a piece of paper outlining what's between our countries. Although it's still not clear what's between your ears. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you are enjoying these vids, then please don't forget to like, subscribe, and very importantly, hit or the notifications bell. There's going to be more videos in the coming weeks. You don't want to miss the midsummer madness. And I'll see you all Wednesday. Maybe Monday? We'll see. Take care.